This program is brought to you by the Merdeka Award, an initiative to promote excellence by ExxonMobil, Petronas, and Shell. Hello, this is the Modega Award Roundtable. My name is Cynthia Ng. On this show, we bring together thought leaders to discuss issues that are critical to nation building. And sports is a prime example when harness its full potential can bring about social change, social inclusion, and it also has the power to bring people together. So that is our topic of discussion today, the future of sports and how it can contribute to nation building. And without further ado, let's bring in our panel for today. I'd like to start with, on my far right, Dr. Ridati Mohamed Razi. She is the president of the Malaysian Association for Sport Management, or MASMA. Next to her, we have Dr. Harmi Tazim, a familiar voice and face uh, on TV. He's a TV sports commentator and also a lecturer at the International Islamic University of Malaysia. And we also have Dr. Ong Kim with us here today, the national coach for Harima Malaysia. And next to me, we have Yang Ahmad Mulia, Tunku Tan Sri Imran, Ibni Almarhum Tunku Jafar Al Haj, President of the Olympic Council of Malaysia. And last but not least, we are joined by Marcus Luer, founder and group CEO of Total Sports Asia. Thank you so much for being part of this discussion. Now, before we get into uh, the role of sports in nation building, I'd like to get a sense on the uh, state of sports in Malaysia. Now, with that, I'd like to start with Tunku because if you look at our past achievements, we have done uh, fairly well, commendable achievement. For example, 2016 was a good year. Uh, we had our best showing at the Olympics. Nigaraku was sank at the uh, Paralympic Games as well. So, what are your thoughts? Well, it was a very good year for the uh, Olympic sports, uh, but uh, sport is such a huge subject and there's so many sports uh, that is played in Malaysia. Uh, it's difficult to generalize and you really can't generalize. Sp some sports are in their infancy, some sports are very well developed, some sports are, I would say, you know, very much on the way up. Some sports uh, are, are on the way down. Whether you're talking about their achievement, whether you're talking about their uh, programs, whether you're talking about the growth uh, of the sport, or whether you're talking about um, you know sport in schools, you know it, it's you know you, you really cannot generalize. I think uh, if you want to generalize, I would say um, that sport in Malaysia is going okay. It could be much, much better, uh, but also could, could be much worse. Okay, let's get the thoughts of uh, other of our speakers, maybe Dr. Widati, in terms of achievement and where are we still lacking in terms of sports development in Malaysia? Well, thank you. Um, I think I have to agree with a lot of what uh, uh, Tunku had mentioned in terms of uh, the inability to generalize about the development of sports. But uh, from an academic point of view, I would go back to the national sports policy because that would be the governing document for uh, sports development in this country and whether or not we had achieved would be based on whether or not we had achieved what the national sports policy uh, had set out to do. So I think um, there are instances where, like Tunku had mentioned, uh, we can see good progress being made, excellent achievement at world-class level but also areas where uh, I would have to say sorely lacking in terms of um, organization and management of, of sports. So uh, my take would be going back to the National Sports Policy 2009 and see whether or not we, we had uh, fulfilled the objectives of that. Yeah. Okay. Now we are here today at the Sepang International Circuit and that's probably why you might have heard the uh, background noises. That is the sound of a roaring engine. We have a motorsport uh, event uh, going on at the SIC right now. But the SIC is a, uh, a testament to uh, the milestone that Malaysia has achieved in terms of organizing international world-class sporting event. But the criticism is that we may not have achieved as much in terms of sports achievements. Uh, yes, we have done well, for example, uh, badminton, squash, we have been consistently world-class, but there are still areas that need 
major improvements, Dr. Harmi? Um, we have achieve, achieved a lot, especially in, in the Paralympics. And the Olympic boys also done very well uh, last year. Um, in other sports, like uh, in motor racing also, we've done um, a lot of achievement. We have for the first time Malaysian riders winning, winning a race in the World Grand Prix and the first non-Japanese rider to win uh, a race. Um, we have Afi Sharin is doing well in, in, in Moto2 and then we have others as well. But in development, we're talking about um, in general because why, where I'm coming from, as in, from media, especially in, in motor racing, um, the, the development is there. In Malaysia, we, we keep on doing it and it's, it's been going on. Um, but um, yes, if you, can, if you want to have um, a world-class player or a world champion in every sport, I think it's a bit, a bit uh, uh, too much to ask, a bit so are impossible. Are we supposed to be more selective in terms of where we place our resources and our assets? Marcus, from your perspective, you have looked at sports across around the region. Right. And when you look into Malaysia, what do you see? Um, I think in general, that what you just said is exactly what most countries are trying to do. Uh, you can't be a champion everywhere. So you pick and choose where somewhat either naturally your athletes have a tendency. So if you look at the African, you know, they have a lot of strong runners and clearly that's, there's a reason why. Um, or if you have a lot of people which are very tall, then you're looking for basketball or volleyball. So clearly you should look at sports where you have either a natural you know, uh, advantage or there is such a huge passion for it. Let's say take table tennis in China. There are always going to be champions coming out of China tables because it's so large. And similar here, badminton is the sport which clearly is... Um, um, on a global level, it's probably the only outside of squash, of course, um, but Batman it has a much longer history. But squash really only started with Nicole. Before that, it wasn't really much about squash, but Batman has always been there um, for much longer. So clearly Malaysia should continue there and, and, and put the resources in there. Similar then, but you look at sports like football, which is, I think we all would say, it's the number one sport in the country. But on an international level, and I don't want to step on the, to the coach's toes here, we all know we're nowhere near of where we should be. Um, so how do we deal with that, that there is so much passion for the sport, there's clearly you know, uh, a lot of resource and money being poured in it, but we're nowhere near where we need to be. Um, so it's a struggle. <laughs> when we mentioned about sports, a lot of comparisons are being made uh, to the glory days of the 1970s when we qualified for the world levels and what's your take on the development of football in Malaysia? I'm sure you get a lot of uh, comments and criticism but it's such a love sp sport, a lot of passion among the people. Well, the number, for me most important we have to look forward. If you're talking about 1970s, uh, due respect to the team, uh, during that period I don't think all Asia countries are playing football and it's good that we qualify, we have the history but at the moment uh, I believe that uh, we need to go back to the grassroots where football doesn't, doesn't achieve success in, in a short period. We need a longer time. So with proper grassroots program that needs uh, a lot of calibration because in football you can't only have FAM or you can't only have the states but you must have Ministry of Education, Ministry of Sports Football Association of Malaysia and even the state's government to come and make it happen. If we don't start with our grassroots program, it will end up the same thing every year in and out. So I believe that uh, even though we don't have success now, but we have to start planning. Everybody, everyone has to start uh, working together. Uh, there will be, it's good to have round table talk as what we're having now with all the, uh, uh, the departments that involve in football development. A few years ago, uh, when our Prime Minister, Dr. Sri Najib, was the Minister of uh, Youth and Sport, he asked me, if there's one thing you would do in sport, what would you do? And I said, you mean I only have one thing? I said, because you know, in sport there's so many things to do. He said, one thing. I said, okay, I would put sport under the Ministry of Education and half your battle is won. And I still believe that. And I think um, it is uh, something that government should look at. That, that should be the way forward because it really is half the battle. Some of our best uh, sports uh, facilities are in schools. Uh, secondly, um, 
that's where, as the, Dr. Ong just mentioned, that's where it has to start at the junior level. Sports, if you're going to be achieving uh, world champions, uh, you, you know, it has to be you know, started at the junior level because it becomes a culture for them, it becomes something that is inbred in them. So you, you have to start it at school. Uh, today, um, I think there's a definite lack of expertise in schools vis-a-vis um, -vis sport. You know, they don't actually train uh, you know, teachers to be sports teachers or, or coaches. Um, but once uh, a ministry is tasked with having uh, you know, an objective, and if sports is one of the objectives, uh, and if the KPI was uh, you not only have got to produce you know, A1 uh, students, you've also got to produce A1 sports persons, sports, sports people, athletes. Uh, as I said, that's, that's part of the battle. Then they have to think about ways and means how to utilize their facilities, how to utilize their results, uh, resources. And the, the one thing that is very glaring, I think all of us know, we drive around uh, Kuala Lumpur or anywhere in the country, uh, and we look at the school fields on a Saturday and a Sunday, they are empty. Beautiful fields, empty. You look at any other country, they would be packed with people playing uh, some sort of sport, and a lot of it will be football. Okay. Now we'll get to more on that, and as well, I want to touch on uh, grassroots development, as mentioned Dato, by Dato on earlier. But we have to take this discussion to our commercial break. But do stay with us, we'll be back shortly. <laughs> 